Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a quest to become the world's greatest tutor. In the last video, we talked about all the units of Physics 1, which was mechanics, like forces, torque, energy, momentum, velocity, acceleration, all that good stuff. But now we're going to be talking about all the units in Physics 2, and how they relate to each other. And Physics 2 is basically the electricity and magnetism side of physics. So we're going to be talking about things like charge and electric field, and magnetic force and magnetic field. So let's get started with the base unit of all things electricity and magnetism, which is the units for charge. The units for charge are the Coulomb, named after some famous scientist whose last name is Coulomb, which just has the symbol capital C. And so there's a lot we can do with the Coulomb. For instance, we can have the units for the electric force, which since it's a force, it's still Newton's capital N, but now, when we introduce the electric field, which is the force acting on a charge, then we get the units and divide it by C, newtons per coulomb. Then we have electric potential energy, which since it's an energy, it has the same units it had in physics one, which is capital J, which stands for joules. But then we have this new quantity in physics two called electric potential, which is different than electric potential energy, Oftentimes the variable you see for electric potential is capital V, which stands for the volt. Now technically there's other units you can use, like for instance you can call the volt the joule per coulomb, or if you really wanted to, you could call it the newton times meter divided by coulomb, but no one ever calls it these last two, everyone calls it the volt, and that's what you should too. And then the last quantity in this unit is electric flux. An electric flux has units of volts times meters, or you could also call it the Newton times meters squared divided by coulombs, but I really would not recommend doing that because the volt times meters is the preferred unit. Then this is typically when we get to the circuits side of physics, electricity, and magnetism, and we have the most famous equation in all of circuits, Ohm's law, V equals I times R. So we already know V, V is voltage, units are capital V, volts, so then now we need to talk about that I, and capital I stands for current, for some reason. And the units for current are going to be the charge per second, C divided by S. However, you will never hear it called the Coulomb per second, and that's because we have a better name for it. It is capital A, which stands for amps, or the longer name, amperes. But we can call them amps, and the symbol is capital A. And that's what I want you using for current. And then the last one on this list is the units for resistance. Now these are some of the hardest units to draw in the class because the unit is the ohm, which is symbol capital omega, which I'll be doing my best to draw here. Definitely take some practice to get good at that. And remember that this is called the ohm, lowercase o, h, m. And that's the units for resistance. This then brings us to capacitors and so we have to talk about capacitance, which the units for capacitance are the Coulomb charge per volt V. But again, no one ever calls it that. We use the Farad, which is capital F, named after the scientist Faraday, who discovered it. And so we want you to be using Farads. Now I guess at this point in the video, I should mention that a lot of times in physics too, we have a combination of units, like for instance, the millifarad, or the microfarad, or the nanocoulomb, or the microcoulomb, or the millivolt, or the milliamp, and all of these prefixes, milli, nano, micro, etc., just mean different things for scientific notation. I cover that in a different video. You should check it out. I'll put the link in the description for all the unit conversions with milli, nano, micro, all that stuff, because it's definitely something you need to know for physics too. And then right after capacitance, we usually have inductance, which has the unit capital H, which stands for the Henry, one of the weirdest units in physics, in my opinion, which then basically leads us to the final units in physics, electricity, and magnetism, which is the magnetic side. So first we need to talk about the magnetic force. Since it's just a force, the units are Newtons, very simple. And then we have the magnetic field, in other words, the magnetic force acting per unit charge. Now if I were to break up the units for the magnetic field, 
it ends up being the Newton times second divided by charge coulomb times meters m. However, no one calls it this. Everyone refers to magnetic field as the Tesla, which is capital T, not named after the car company, but after the scientist that the car company was named after, which of course is Nikola Tesla, perhaps the greatest physicist of all time, in my opinion, and many people's opinion. And that's because he did so many cool things for the world of physics. You should definitely check out another video in your free time about that guy. He's awesome. But anyways, the last unit we have to talk about today is magnetic flux, which is a magnetic field times a unit of area. So the units you would typically say is the Tesla times meters squared. Or if you don't like these units, you can also call it the Weber or the Weber. I'm not sure actually how to pronounce it. But it's capital W, lowercase b, one of the only units that is made up of two letters, and that stands for Weber, W-E-B-E-R. Personally, I like Tesla times meters squared better, but Weber, W-B, is also 100% correct and frequently used. So with that, that's basically all the units I have for you today. If you think I missed any, please comment in the comment section below. Thank you all for watching, have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.